Lactulose can be very problematic, both practically with the stickiness that gets everywhere and the sweet sickly taste that many people cannot tolerate. However, the reason that I hate lactulose is due to the issues of side effects from the fermentation by gut bacteria, which is especially problematic for those people with irritable bowel syndrome and can cause small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I will go through the mechanisms of actions, the side effects and the one specific diagnosis where there is some benefit. Followed on, I will then go on to what the alternatives are, which will vary depending on what the cause of constipation is and whether this is by um, opioid or medication induced constipation, IBS, pregnancy or chronic constipation or for those that are frail or with lack of mobility. There will be timestamps and references in the description box below. But before I start on the content, here are my disclaimers. I'm Eloise, I'm a UK pharmacist of 20 years and I am passionate about clear, accurate information on medicines and supplements that everyone can understand. The information I provide is for educational information only and it's my own opinion. However, I do my base it on the most up-to-date evidence. Always contact your own healthcare professional for your individual advice on your own personal situation. Let's get on to the main topic. Lactulose is a laxative that is known as an osmotic. And an osmotic agent is something that pulls water into the intestines. It was originally um, developed in 1929 by combining lactose, which is a milk sugar, with fructose, which is a fruit sugar. And combining them together made a very sweet and sickly sugar molecule that isn't actually absorbed by the intestine. So it stays in the intestines all the way through and draws in water into the intestines, which softens the stools and pulls in a, a volume of water to allow it to be pushed through the intestines. And it, it does work very well for this. However, it does also come with some downsides. So it is extremely sweet and sickly. It's more, more sweet and sickly than actually a single sugar molecule. And sometimes this makes it very unpalatable to, to people to be able to actually take in the volumes that are required. It is also so sticky. And if you ever talk to anybody who's ever had to use it, and especially any nurses that have ever had to use it or um, carers in nursing homes, the stickiness just gets everywhere. A medicines trolley can end up in such a mess with the, the stickiness, even if you were as careful as possible in pouring it. And so I'm pretty sure that any sort of carer would welcome the opportunity to be able to swap off lactulose onto something else. However, that isn't actually the reason why I hate it. Um, I actually don't like the actual side effects that is produced from lactulose, which can be totally avoided by using different agents. So lactulose, it is a two sugar, sugar molecules joined together that our body can't absorb and our bodies can't use. However, However, it does feed certain bacteria in our colons and these bacteria then excrete certain acids and certain gases as side effects. So the, these bacteria are lactobacilli and bifidobacteria and it can then produce um, acetic acid, lactic acid and formic acid, carbon dioxide, hydrogen and all of this added into the colon can produce pretty potent and um, problematic um, side effects of flatulence that is not pleasant, um, bloating, cramps and explosive um, stools. So this is not very pleasant and can be totally avoided by... Yet I'm going to go on and actually explain one situation when lactulose can be essential and can be um, a life-saving treatment. So in people with liver cirrhosis, the liver can't metabolize the different toxins that are going around at the body and different toxins can build up in the system. Um, one being ammonia. And 
higher levels of ammonia can cause problems all around the body, including up to the brain. And when the higher levels of ammonia are causing problems in the brain, it can lead to something known as hepatic encephalopathy, which can actually be a very um, life threatening condition and needs treating. And one of the ways of getting the ammonia out of the system is by using really high doses of lactulose. Sometimes because of the volumes needed, these may actually be given either by an enema or through, through a tube into the stomach, or hopefully if the patient can tolerate, um, they can actually take the, um, the volume in orally. Um, so I'll show you how this works. So the lactulose, using the side effect that I've already mentioned of these colonic bacteria producing organic acids in the colon, can actually then lower the pH in the colon. And due to the lower pH in the colon, it can actually trap ammonia, shown on this diagram as the NH4+. And by trapping this ammonia, it can actually pull even more ammonia out of the bloodstream into the colon and then have it excrete out of the system. Obviously, it also has um, an osmotic effect and this helps because it increases the transit through the colon so it can pull even more ammonia out. Obviously, this isn't the most pleasant thing for the, the person suffering um, with liver cirrhosis, but because it is a life-saving treatment, then it can be worth the side effects. Although there are newer agents um, being developed that are starting to be used. But yeah, that is the, the one time that I think that it is necessary for lactulose to be used. However, there are plenty other types of just plain constipation where we can find better alternatives. And I will move on and explain those different ones. Due to lactulose having a great mechanism of action, um, drug companies were on the lookout to see if they could replicate this. And they did. They managed to make macrogols, and these were long chains that could attract water and hold water into the intestines, but didn't get broken down by bacteria, so didn't have any side effects. Um, it was first invented in the 1980s as a colonic irrigation preparation, and then into the 1990s, Movicol came on the market with a, a small amount in a sachet with some electrolytes to help keep the balance of electrolytes in the body. And this became a game changer in the treatment of constipation and was one of the biggest costs for laxatives worldwide. In fact, it got used far too widely for every type of constipation regardless of the physiological reason for the constipation. And this isn't actually the best way to treat constipation. The best way to treat constipation is to look at the cause of the constipation and see if you can actually modify the cause of the constipation and treat that. However, the one mainstay for the osmotics and having it as the macrogol rather than as the lactulose that ferments, but as the macrogol that doesn't, is in children. In children, it does work really well. And Movicol, the original brand, were, be, were able to do all the testing to work out exactly the correct dosage and how to do a regime where you can increase and decrease the dosage as required. But when it comes to children and constipation, this is something that should always be done under the supervision with the doctor and quite often with referral up to a consultant. So I was just say that macrogols, best place in the treatment of children, but can be used second or third line in adults when the other options that I'm gonna go into have failed. One type of constipation that shouldn't have an osmotic being used first line, either as the, the older lactulose or as the newer cleaner macrogols, is opioid induced constipation. Now, many different medications have side effects that affect the bowels um, and some that can cause constipation. 
One, one of them is iron supplements, and I have done a previous video on iron supplements and whether you um, could alter the dosage to reduce um, any constipation and side effects from that. So I will leave a, a link for you to be able to go back and look at that video. But one um, large group of medications that is commonly prescribed for acute and chronic pain is the opioids. And even with the weaker opioids of codeine and dihydrocodeine, all through tramadol to morphine and to fentanyl and oxycodone, they all con cause constipation. And constipation is something that will always be a side effect with the increasing dose and is not something that your body gets tolerance to, even though you may get tolerance to the pain relieving effect of opioids. So if you're starting on an opioid and you're gonna be on them regular, you may need to actually start a laxative to preemptive that problem and ensure that you don't get bunged up because sometimes the actual um, constipation from opioids can be so severe that it can actually lead to a blockage and we must um, avoid that at all cost. The problem with using a macrogol or lactulose um, when an opioid is being used is because the opioid actually switches off the receptors in the gut that cause the contractions known as peristalsis that moves all of the um, in, all of the food and then stools in the intestines along. And if that's switched off, it really doesn't matter how much macrogol you keep putting in at the top that's going to pull even more water in. You're just going to end up getting a lot of bloating and a lot of flatulence until eventually it will push it all out and it won't be very pleasant. In opioid induced constipation, you do actually need to have an agent that can actually switch back on that peristalsis, get the gut actually moving along and moving the stools along the intestines and out. And um, the group of um, laxatives to do this are called the stimulant laxatives, and these are usually either Senna or Bausticodol. Both of these are available to buy over the counter, and they are best used as a small dose at night in the hopes that it will help keep the gut moving and help that constipation be relieved. Personally, I prefer the bisacoidol over the senna. Um, the senna does start acting as soon as it's in the intestines and can cause more cramping sort of in the small intestines as well as into the large intestines. Whereas bisacoidol does its work a little bit further along and doesn't have as much cramping. But both are very good and very effective. And I always recommend that with people that are gonna need a higher dose of the opioids and long term of the opioids that one of those two agents are put in first. If then after then something else is needed, then another agent that's a softener or the macrogol that pulls the, the liquid in can be added on to help soften the stools and provide a, a smoother transit of the stool. But yeah, for opioid induced, you're best off with a stimulant such as Senna or bicycle. For many other types of constipation, then blasting with the osmotic macrogol isn't always the best option. And sometimes it can be as simple as diet and lifestyle, increasing fiber in the diet, increasing fluid intake, um, reducing stress and rushing around um, toileting, being able to sit with the feet up into more of a squat position so that the, the muscles can relax. And I can fill a whole video on the, the diet and lifestyle ways of treating constipation. This can be especially beneficial for people with irritable bowel syndrome, with alongside that looking at different things in the diet that may worsen either the diarrhea or the constipation that comes with irritable bowel syndrome. Moving on from that, if you aren't able to get enough fibre in your diet, then there are fibre supplements that can be taken. Um, usually on the prescription in the UK, this is known as um, fibre gel or ispigula husk, which is a nat naturally found fibre from 
from the Ispagula husk, but just put into a sachet that can be made up and taken. I always do recommend if you do make it up, make it up with plenty of water and drink it straight away before it turns into the gloop that is going to be the gloop that's going to help push through your intestines. Another one that's very commonly sold from health food shop is um, the Xylem husk. Um, it's often touted as a miracle cure by people that are trying to oversell expensive supplements, but it is just a good basic fiber supplement to help your intestines move along and clear out all the usual things that need clearing out of your intestines. There is no additional extra toxins that need moving out, just the, your general waste products that need removing out. However, sometimes adding in an extra fiber supplement isn't enough. And one of my um, most preferred laxatives to use is what is known as a stool softener. And this agent um, known as Docusate helps by softening the stools. It helps the stools also absorb more water and it works a bit like, I like to explain it, it's a bit like washing up liquid that allows oil and malt water to mix. Well, it allows um, water to penetrate into the stools no matter what the stools are made of. It also provides a little bit of smoothness to the stool so that the stool can actually slide through the intestines more easily when you're using your peristalsis to push out the stool. It also does have a very slight stimulant effect, like which I've already said with the Senna and Bicycodol. So again, helps with the movements out. Docusate can be extremely good for um, people that have got low mobility, so they don't have their own mobility that's moving the peristalsis along. It's very good for people who can't um, drink massive quantities of water and so would prevent the dehydration that may come through taking an osmotic that is going to be pulling fluid into the intestines all the time. It allows you to still be able to have softer stools with a minimal amount of extra water when somebody struggles to drink too much water, especially sort of more the frail and elderly who may want to not take as much water in if they struggle to be able to get to the toilet on time. And again, with um, it taking, you're taking a low dose regularly of either a stimulant or a stool softener, you're able to have more formed stools regularly Whereas sometimes with the Movicol and the, especially with the previous lactulose, the softness of the stools can actually make fecal incontinence um, not very pleasant. So Docusate is my favourite. Um, it can be used in a, the majority of different types of constipation. But this is something that should always be discussed between a patient and between their doctor increasing and decreasing the dosages to try and get a nice balance. I can go into details about all of the laxatives in a future video if you would like me to go into more in depth and exactly the steps one, two and three in different di indications of laxatives. I have wrote um, guidelines for my local area and many different local areas nationally have taken on my guidelines and I am very, very proud of that. Um, it makes me be known as the um, the poo queen. <laughs> I don't know whether that's the best title to have in the world. So if you are watching and you've got this far, um, comment below um, either queen or crown if you agree that um, being a poo, poo queen is a good thing. I hope you found this video interesting. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up because that will really help the YouTube algorithm share this video far and wide if you've got any comments and questions or if you'd like me to go into more depth in future videos please comment below and i will do my best to answer them and if you really did enjoy my content and would like to see more content from me please subscribe thank you so much for watching i appreciate all of you all my previous viewers and hopefully any future viewers that if you're willing to come back Thank you.